Hi everyone, Rich Crescenti here with another in our series of videos making music with Melodyne. And today is part four of our series that examines the further integration of Pro Tools and Melodyne using ARA. Now in the first three videos, we covered a lot of ground that would be very useful for new users. And today what we're going to be doing is really focusing on some things that are going to be good for them too, but really focusing on existing Pro Tools users. There's changes to the workflow now, and that's going to make your life a lot easier, but you may have some questions about how things behave compared to how they used to behave. So we're going to cover those and answer a lot of those questions today. So first thing, right out of the gate, I know that like many of you might have older sessions with Melodyne on them. Uh, Melodyne instantiated as a plugin, and the good news is, is that when you upgrade, right? When you download this new version of Pro Tools, Melodyne will automatically be installed. Your old sessions that have Melodyne on them will still open and function exactly as they did before, right? You can still open up a session that might have Melodyne on a plugin like this and edit it as you see fit. Uh, it will work just fine. I would not recommend rendering those and then putting Melodyne on again using ARA. Just leave them as they are, edit them if you need to, and for any new tracks, you can use the ARA version. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to, for whatever reason, you can still work in the old method. You can still instantiate Melodyne as a plugin, and then go ahead and transfer it in and work in the old way if you'd like to do that. But you're not going to be able to do a lot of the very cool things that I'm going to show you today. Now, some of you also may have some questions because you already own Melodyne. If you already have Melodyne Editor or Assistant or Studio, you don't have to worry about anything downgrading. Your license will be the same. You'll just get the new version of ARA Melodyne and all the new features that it has. However, there are a few of you that may have Melodyne Essential and maybe you just purchased it and you might be a little bit bummed out because now it comes free with Pro Tools. Well, don't worry. You're not going to get left out in the cold. If you already own a version of Melodyne, you still get this voucher for Melodyne Essential. So if you wanted to, you could sell that or you could use it to save some money when it's time to upgrade to one of the upper tier versions. All right, so let's jump in and take a look and talk about some of these great new features that I was talking about earlier on today. Now, a big thing to understand about the way that Melodyne works now is it's going to be heavily clip based. Now, when you put Melodyne on a clip, it will still analyze the entire track, right? It still looks at all of the information that's there. So whether Melodyne is on a clip or on the whole track, it doesn't make a difference to processing power. However, a lot of your workflow will be clip-based. Let me give you an example right here, right? If we look at this, I'm going to zoom in on this clip that I've got in here. The, end of the, the beginning of this clip is trimmed right up until this word right here. So... Because it's a clip-based workflow, if I wanted to take this word and extend it, right, you'll notice that it's extending it, but it won't play it back, right? If I take this track and start playback before there, listen to what happens. All the voices. Playback of it of the audio didn't actually start until the clip starts, right? So, what I would recommend doing is, if you want to extend something like that, you can just come up here and make the clip a little bit longer, and then that gives you the ability to extend that out if you wanted to. All right, if for some reason, let's say you've got a clip like this one right here, and you're mixing a track and somebody sends it to you, and it can't be trimmed out, right? That is the end of it right there. I might recommend, before you put Melodyne on, extend it a little bit longer, and then consolidate, right? Shift Option 3 in Pro Tools will consolidate, it makes a whole new audio file, and now I've got a tail on there if I wanted to extend this. So now I can just right-click, go to Melodyne, come to Edit, and now I've got some extra space at the end if I wanted to stretch things out a little bit. Very, very, very cool stuff. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this clip-based workflow that, uh, that I really like. It gives us a lot of very cool features. I'm going to undo what I did in this right here. And in order to show you this, I'm going to turn off this feature, which is zoom to follow selection of DAW, because I want to be able to zoom out a little bit on this and, and show you what's really going on right here. So in previous versions of Melodyne, 
once a track was transferred, you couldn't move that clip around. So you kind of had to take your pitch correction and then all of your time corrections and maybe do them separately. Now with this new version of ARA, everything is so much better with that. You no longer have those limitations. Watch what I'm talking about right here. Now if I want to, I can just take a clip and just drag it and move it and you'll see it instantly updates in Melodyne and follows exactly what you did right there. This makes comping and editing and changing timing and rearranging your song so much easier and so much faster. Really very cool stuff that I like working with here. Now, depending upon some of the ways that you treat these clips, you're gonna get some different behaviors. So let me show you some cool things right here. For example, let's say I wanted multiple copies of this clip to happen in a row. There's a few different ways that I can do that. One, I can copy and paste, right? So hit Command C and then hit Tab and hit Command V. And now we see that both of those are on there. Let me turn uh, zoom to selection back on. And you'll see that we've made two copies of this right here. When you copy and paste, these are known as independent copies. So if I edit one, it does not affect the other. If you wanted to have a bunch of these in a row, you could easily do re the repeat command, which in Pro Tools is option R. If I hit option R, it'll say, how many times do you wanna repeat that? I've already got two clips selected right here. If I want it four times, I only need one repeat. So I hit okay. And now we see we've got four versions of it. And these are still independent copies. So editing one does not affect the other. All right. Now, there's another way. Let's say I wanted a bunch of copies of this clip in a row where I could edit one and they would all change. This is where the loop command becomes very, very useful. And looping in Pro Tools is easy. Just hit option command L and it'll ask you how many times you want to loop it. There's a few different options right here. Let's say I want four of these in a row. I just hit four and then hit enter. But now look at this. Now watch happens. When I edit one of these, the other ones all follow suit. So now you can edit audio like it's MIDI. This is really cool, powerful stuff and gives you a couple of different ways to loop out clips depending upon the editing behavior that you want right there. Really, really great stuff for having that right there. Okay, now sometimes we may want to copy a clip to another track, right? For example, let's say I want to put a copy of this onto this track right here. This track beneath it, the sample vocals track, does not have Melodyne on it. So if I copy it down, right, I can hold down Option and Control to drag a copy down that won't move in time. If I copy this down, you'll notice it copied over the clip, but Melodyne is not on there. So this clip right here would not have any of the edits that you made on there, which is fine if you want to work that way. But if you want a copy of that clip to be dragged over and still have the edits that you made, you're going to want to make sure that Melodyne is on this track first. That's easy, right? You can easily, you don't have to edit these other clips to put Melodyne on there. You can just right click on here, come over here to where it says edit under Melodyne. Once Melodyne is on that track, if I take this clip and drag it down, we now see that it's got Melodyne on there. And this now also has independent behavior from the copies above. If I edit this note and drag that up, when we switch back to this clip, you'll see that edit is not done right there. So this gives independent behavior. The same thing holds true if you duplicate a track, right? Let's say I wanted to duplicate this track right here. I could right click and duplicate, and this will make a whole nother copy of the track exactly. And this will be an independent copy as well. So if I come to this one and edit it like so, we come up to the top one and see that edit did not happen right there. Okay. This is excellent for creating harmonies and background vocals that maybe were not captured during tracking. So really, really great, powerful workflows that we've got right there. Okay, let me undo that right there. And speaking of undo, Command-Z works as undo in both Pro Tools and inside Melodyne. However, it pays attention to whichever one you were kind of working in last, right? So if I click on Melodyne and hit Command-Z, it will undo what was done in Melodyne. If I hit undo again, it won't do anything in Pro Tools because I'm kind of working in Melodyne. So if you hit Command-Z and it doesn't undo in Pro Tools, just click on the Pro Tools window and hit Command-Z and you'll get that undo level done right there. All right, now some of you may be working with what we call clip 
groups in Pro Tools. And these can be excellent for arranging. For those of you that don't know, it's Option Command G. And what it does is it takes a group of clips and makes them kind of behave like one. This is great for uh, changing arrangements uh, or, or on the fly without interrupting a bunch of tiny edits that are already there. The danger here is that when I click on this, it will still display in this Melodyne window right here, but I'm not really sure if I'm looking at this double or if I'm looking at the original lead vocal. So if you want to do Melodyne edits, I would just undo the clip group, which is Option Command U, click on whichever one of these you'd like to make your edit on, and then you can click on it again and hit Option Command R, and it will remake that group. All right. Now, another powerful, important feature that will be really good to know is how edits to these clips affect Melodyne, right? For example, you can hit Command M and that will mute this clip, right? So if we play this one, listen to what happens. We don't hear anything at all. And that's because edits to these clips occur after Melodyne. The good news is, is that even if this clip is muted, you can still come over here and get local playback by clicking in the Melodyne window. All the voices. Great. The same thing holds true with clip gain. So if I drag this down when we get play, all the voices. We get a much smaller one, but again, local playback. All the voice gives you the original audio that is in Melodyne right here. And also the other same thing is true for fades, right? For example, if I drag a fade in and then do a fade out when we press play. All the voices get loud in the quiet hour. You'll notice it tracks with those fades. However, if we come to local playback, all the voices just like that. All right, now one last thing for today is audio suite editing. I know sometimes people do some audio suite editing. I do it for reversing vocals. I do it sometimes for Isotope RX or other things that I want to clean up in there. And when you do some audio suite editing, if Melodyne is on there, I want you to know that it will render whatever edits that you've made to Melodyne right there. So for example, if I take this clip right here and edit this note up, and come over here to Audio Suite and reverse this. And then I can render it and reverse it again. It goes back to where it is. And if I right click on this and edit in Melodyne, you'll see that that initial note was still dragged up right there. So Audio Suite editing will render whatever edits you've already made inside Melodyne. Lots of great information about how these clips behave and the way that editing behaves inside Melodyne. Hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks.